All right, you're currently watching video E4.P2-4, which is going to be the notes, weather versus climate. <clears throat> two, of the, two of the most commonly misused words when talking about weather uh, in general uh, in how the words are really uh, talking about what's taking place within our atmosphere, but at different time frames. Uh, probably two of the most confused words or misused words uh, with regards to... Um, when we talk about things that are happening on earth, uh, weather versus climate. So what I'm going to search you off with is uh, just some general things that uh, you may be familiar with, you may have seen, you may have experienced, or maybe something that you at some point in your life hope to see or be a part of. Look at this thing. Watch out right here. Funnel cloud right here. All right, so you had an opportunity to watch some of the, you know, phenomenons that take place with weather. Uh, you know, some of you have lived in areas now having moved to Michigan or back to Michigan uh, where you've experienced some of these more severe type weather, such as hurricane floods, uh, maybe even tornadoes. Uh, and then those of us living in Michigan haven't necessarily had the ability to live through some of those, but that might not be a bad thing either uh, because of the severity of those type of storms and uh, the devastation that that can have on lives and also uh, to the human uh, just human psyche. So anyway, uh, with all of that having been said, let's get into the heart of the message, which is uh, basically the learning target for this, as it is listed up here, says, uh, describe the difference between weather and climate. So we're focusing on what weather is and what climate is and truly what the difference between the two uh, is. Okay, so here we go. Weather. For the most of you, you wake up in the morning and uh, you turn on the news just to make sure that uh, you know school hasn't been canceled or mom and dad <clears throat> maybe haven't woken you up uh, because you know school's been canceled. I mean, that's we live in Michigan. Let's face it, we have those days where we uh, we wake up and we hope that uh, we turn on the weather and find out that school's been canceled because of whatever ice or snow or combination of both. And with that keeping in mind, I mean. That's what weather really is. It's, it's the way in which the world 
acts, our atmosphere that surrounds our world uh, and how it affects life and how it affects humans. Those two things um, kind of go hand in hand. So if it's you know icy outside, it's going to affect our lives because we may not be able to do something that we wanted to or had planned to do outside. So when it comes down to it, the, the difference between weather and climate is really going to be long term versus short term. Uh, so when we talk about weather, we're going to be talking about the short term effects, the minutes and months and maybe even over the course of a couple months, uh, the change in our atmosphere that takes place um, to cause maybe rain, snow, sleet, hail, a number of other things that take place as well. So when we talk about weather, you know, there, there's some common things that people come up with regarding weather. You know, the first, uh, I remember talking to my grand, grandpa who passed away a number of years ago. Uh, and every time I would talk to him, either face to face or on the phone, you know, the first thing that he would start talking about is temperature. You know, man, is it hot outside or man, I remember back when it was so cold, you know, talking about uh, things that are related to life. Um, and I'm sure your grandparents do it, maybe even your parents do it, but one of the common things that, that sparks uh, conversation amongst humans, people that don't even know each other, is when you talk about the weather, you know, what's happening outside at that given moment in time. You know, the things that we talk about, obviously temperature, humidity, if it's raining, sn snowing, sleet, hail outside, you know, if it's partly cloudy, if it's sunny, um, you know, how far we can see, especially if those people that are flying. I mean, visibility is a huge piece. You know, if it's windy outside, you got to wear a jacket, some type of breeze, or maybe you can wear a short sleeve t-shirt. And then pressure. Pressure is going to be one that uh, for most of you is going to be a new one. And we'll talk about that in greater detail uh, in the coming units. Uh, we won't spend a whole lot of time talking about it here. But nonetheless, that's another thing that also uh, plays a role with weather. Whether or not it's going to be cloudy or if it's going to be sunny outside, whether or not you may get a headache uh, or not, whether or not you might feel it in your joints or bones, maybe if you've broken some, uh, pressure plays a big deal with that. So really, how fast does weather truly change? Um, if you take the West Coast and move all the way across the United States to the East Coast, it can take weather. So if you have some type of, let's say, rainstorm that's taking place on the West Coast, it potentially could take up to five to seven days for that rain to move all the way across the United States. And sometimes that rain won't continue to fall from the sky because it may interact with another type of system coming from a different portion of the world. Uh, so how fast does it truly change? Uh, that's, you know, we live in Michigan and the, the saying goes, don't blink your eye because the weather might change it is somewhat true. I mean, is it quite true? No, not necessarily, but it's just a phrase that we've grown up to, uh, to use in Michigan. So weather can change literally minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, and then season to season. Um, you know, they're short terms, uh, you know, minute to minute, 60 seconds, hour to hour, 60 minutes, day to day, 24 hours, uh, season to season, three months. Um, so, you know, it can change quite quickly. The things that make up our weather are common things every day, things that you see outside, things that you feel, things that you've experienced. So you get sun, you get rain, you get snow, you get freezing rain, you might get a snowstorm, a hailstorm, you might get a heat wave where it's really, really hot outside, you know, during the summer months. Um, you know, just a few short years ago, those farmers, especially in Allegan County, uh, applied for federal disaster uh, relief because it was so hot we hadn't gotten rain hadn't gotten enough rain to uh, for the crops to grow so many of the farmers in Allegan County and probably even in Hamilton had to apply for federal assistance because uh, they lost their crops because of the excessive heat and lack of rain then we switch topics and we go into climate I mean they still are dealing with the quote unquote weather in our atmosphere but it truly is something that is different and as I mentioned at the beginning Weather is going to be described in short term, so minute to minute, hour to hour, uh, day to day, month to month, uh, but climate is going to be a very long term pattern. And by long term, we're talking over 30 years, 30 years, it's a long time, but 30 years over a particular area. So take Michigan or take the Great Lakes, for example, 
what's truly taken place with our climate over the course of the last 30 years on, let's take a date, let's say January 1st. Over the course of 30 years on January 1st, you would tend to find that the climate would probably be cold, right? Because we're dealing in January, we're in the Great Lakes region. And if we talk more specifically about Michigan, it could definitely be said, yeah, January 1st is going to be cold. And then we look at, let's say, June 1st or July 1st or August 1st. Over the course of 30 years, that specific date is going to find that the temperature is probably going to be warmer, if not hot, compared to January 1st over the course of the same 30 years. So it's climate is a long term. We're not talking just minutes and hours and days and, and months. We're talking 30 plus years or even longer where it, the tradition that we tend to find in all the, the data that's been calculated tends to be roughly the same. Uh, and that's, again, why they use an average. It's an average over the course of those 30 years as to what traditionally is seen at that point in time. So then once we start talking about the long-term part, scientists, when they talk about climate, want to talk about it in this term. They want to talk about the average precipitation, so how much rain is received by an area. They want to talk about the average temperature, how hot or how cold was it. They also want to talk about humidity, the amount of moisture that's in the air. Then they can start talking about, you know, was it sunny on a particular day? Is it more sunny on June 1st over 30 years than it is on June 2nd? You could compare that. And then you can also compare, you know, the wind velocity how fast the wind was actually traveling on a particular day during a particular season. And again, they talk about that because they want to look for trends within our climate uh, in a particular day, in a particular location on Earth over the course of 30 plus years or even longer. So things that they could be looking for, phenomena that could be tracking and things that they could be collecting, you know, was it foggy? Was there frost? Was there some type of storm? Um, you know, again, this is something that they're looking at. Are there trends in the data over a course of 30 plus years that fog occurs more times over 30 years on March 3rd than it does on any date on the calendar over the course of 30 years? Or frost. Frost first shows up in October, traditionally around October 27th uh, is usually when most people get their first frost. Those, those are things that they can collect and they can use as far as examples that they can share with, uh, with you and I about what traditionally we would find uh, over the course of you know, time. Example of things that uh, they can use to measure climate. First of all, they can take rain gauges where they can measure the amount of rain that's fallen. They can measure the amount of water that's in a lake or a reservoir, you know, if the levels are rising or if they're falling. They can also use satellites to collect data, so they can actually take a look as to cloud, uh, cloud coverage. Um, they can also then collect whether or not an area was drier or more moist than it normally has been. So again, this when you're collecting all of this information, you're not just collecting it for you know tomorrow's weather or the following week or the following month. You're collecting this because it goes into a, a pile of data that is going to be looked at over the course of time, 30, 40, 50, or even longer number of years, uh, because they're looking for if there's any change in the climate, if there's actually uh, something that is doing something different. You know, the temperature is changing, it's getting warmer, or it's getting cooler. Um, you know, these are, these are pieces of data that people that are researching global climate change uh, that are, are referencing looking at the history of particular places throughout the entire world that uh, for a long period of time have experienced a particular type of weather uh, on a particular day over the course of 30, 40 plus years. And now they're finding that that's not happening anymore. So that's where global climate change comes into play. So when it's all said and done, when, when asked what the difference between weather and climate is, uh, a very simple phrase that meteorologists are using, people that study weather, uh, is that climate is what you expect because data proves that on March 1st you're going to have this type of temperature this type of cloud cover because over the course of 30 plus years that's what's happened almost all the time but weather on the other hand weather is what you get so you open up the curtains and you look outside and you look oh it looks like it's gonna rain today oh it kind of feels kind of cold it's it's what you get 
versus looking at data and looking at trends over a long period of time, it's what you would expect to have happen. All right? So if you have any questions about the difference between weather and climate, come talk to myself or Mr. Fusek.